Hey there guys, this is Don from Pronatec. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how I built a 45 gallon diesel tank uh, out of aluminum. Uh, this was a project that a customer of mine came to me and he asked he wanted a, a fuel tank that would go a full width of his flatbed ranch truck and he wanted it made out of aluminum and it had to fit behind another box that he has on the truck already. So uh, he laid out the dimensions and what he wanted for gallonage and basically from then on uh, I designed the rest of it and built it out of aluminum. So I'll be showing you how I built that, what the important aspects are of a fuel tank, especially one that's going to be going down the road on a vehicle. Uh, this was built to DOT specs so that uh, all safety features are there and uh, so that it can be safe. The only uh, variance is that uh, it has an inch and a half fitting coming out the bottom because he wants to direct feed it into his uh, fuel tank. So basically this one will be on top of the bed, the other one's under the bed and they'll both be feeding through the main tank. Um, Anyway, I'll show you how I built it and uh, how to build one yourself. So stick with me and I'll show you how I did it. All right, thanks. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is I have the bottom of the tank uh, and I'm laying out for the bung that goes on the bottom for where the outlet is going to be. Also, one of the things that made this uh, build so much quicker is that I had all of the sheet metal sheared uh, to the right widths. Uh, and lengths that I needed. Uh, this sped things up enormously and if you're going to build a tank I highly recommend whoever you get the aluminum from uh, to have it sheared to the right widths. Uh, these are the baffles uh, that I used and these also were out of the same material which I built this tank out of eighth inch. And here I'm just laying out uh, the bottom and one side. These are some uh, fabrication squares that I made and uh, this really speeds things up as far as holding things in place. You can see I'm using those squares to hold the side as well as the baffles. And I'm tack welding in the baffles so you can see um, how it holds everything together once you ha have the baffles. And the baffles you want to make sure you have uh, no more than 10 gallons uh, sloshing around. So. On this tank, because it's 45 gallons, I've got a little less than that because I'm putting three baffles in. Uh, I'm spacing out the two on the ends uh, because I only have two, I've only made two of these uh, fabrication squares. I plan on building another one or two here soon. I might do a video on that. But right now I'm just tacking in those baffles. And what this does uh, is just allows the fuel to flow underneath in those corners you see that are cut out but it also strengthens the tank in the middle and gives it some structure. I'm just making sure everything's square and lined up before I get uh, all this tacked in. And once I get everything tacked, uh, I'm going to put the other side on and then after I get the bottom two joints on the, uh, on the uh, tank done, I will go back and fully weld out uh, these baffles to the sides. Right now I'm just tacking uh, the one side to the bottom just to hold everything in place and then I'm going to take my, this is a large rail that I have that I set up whenever I'm doing long welds. This really helps to uh, guide me along and keep it consistent where I don't get fatigued. Uh, I can concentrate just on the weld and feeding rod. So here I'm uh, welding in the baffles so that it's connected to the opposite side and that way it'll hold uh, the side stable and uh, without warping while I'm running the long welds on the bottom two seams. Uh, and in just a second here I'm going to flip it up that way I can start running the long welds. I've got everything tacked at this point and I just want to hold everything square and straight while I do those. Just cleaning up the aluminum, setting up my rail so that I can run these uh, these long welds. You can't see it that well but on this rail I have a sliding bearing. It's called a linear stage or a linear bearing and it really keeps 
uh, the welds nice and smooth. It makes it so much easier to do consistent uh, aluminum welds especially uh, because you're, you're doing such long runs and uh, it makes it so much easier. It's one of the things I definitely recommend anyone should do if they're going to be doing long welds like this. Right now I'm just tacking on the ends. I've got the baffles uh, welded in and the two bottom seams welded and now I'm just tacking uh, the end plates on. Now once I get this done then I can start uh, uh, tacking on the top and making sure that I have everything. Because everything was sheared I know that everything is square and straight and I did measure it as well to make sure. Uh, they do a really good job where at uh, the shop that I get my aluminum from. So here I'm just uh, tacking on the ends and now I'm tacking on the top plate as well. This is the top of the tank. You can see that I have some cross slats there and that is just to uh, keep things level as I go around. I make sure that the ends are all tacked on uh, exactly where they are and square because if you start at one end and you start going down a lot of times by the time you get to the other end things have moved uh, due to distortion and welding. So this is a method that's worked well for me. Uh, I get the corners and everything tacked down on the ends and then I go down the sides and then I move the slats as I get to uh, clamping all the way so that I get the because I, I do leave I don't I don't do things flush whenever you do a tank you want to make sure you have your a little bit of a V uh, gap that way your filler rod uh, has some uh, good penetration down into the joint on an outside corner and so here I am just making sure that I have all my gaps correct as I clamp and I go along and you'll see that I, uh, as I go, I pull out the slats. That way, um, I control the the uh, you know the alignment as I go down. the The tacking process is one of the most tedious parts of this, as uh, you're trying to get everything, make sure it stays square, and um, and looks good. That way, you're done, and it makes so much so much nicer to weld when you have a nice even. Uh, bevel to weld into. Uh, here I'm uh, set my my linear bearing up so that I can uh, weld the ends. I've welded all the the sides at this point and you can see that I have a little pad set up that uh, I rest my hand on and I can just slide this along and it keeps um, any drag down to an absolute minimum and uh, so I have, it's a very high quality bearing and uh, it's one of, the, uh, one of the coolest things I've done to make doing long aluminum welds come out really professional looking. So if, uh, if you're considering doing, you know, some uh, long aluminum welds on tanks and things like this, you can see there that I ran out of rod and I really should have started with a full size rod. That way you don't have to stop, but it's good practice to uh, also keep up on your starts and stops as well. Uh, but that's something that you really should, uh, I should have thought out before I grabbed that. But, you know, once you get into the flow, a lot of times you don't uh, pay attention to how much rod's in your hand. All right, so now I'm welding in the bungs for uh, the fittings that are going to go in. This one is a half inch NPT, and this is going to be for the rollover uh, protection vent. And uh, I'm tacking it in right now, but I'm uh, gonna show how I do a pivot around a small fitting like this. I usually put in a piece of pipe into uh, the proper fitting, and then I use it for a pivot uh, to go around. I don't know what I did with the footage. Uh, either I forgot to start the camera after this, but anyway, uh, you get the picture. Uh, so I don't have any footage of actually welding this bung in, but the main fitting uh, Here I am using just a TIG finger uh, for the pivot. I have it set up on top This protects my hand from the heat and it also makes it friction uh, lower due to uh, the fiberglass it works really well and it also that it's on the corner makes it nice for being able to do uh, this fitting this filler neck uh, in one pass around half of it and then one more pass to finish up. Uh, usually on a lot of round fittings when there's a pipe sticking all the way up you have to do either thirds or 
you know, four paths or four sections, I should say. And uh, but this makes it uh, a lot easier and uh, protects your hand and it gives you a nice smooth uh, run around the fitting. Here you can see both of the fittings welded in and nice button at the end so this thing never cracks. I'll just take you around and so you can see the welds. You can see the camera struggling with uh, focusing but you can see these are these are nice full penetration welds that are uh, very structural and will last the lifetime of this tank. All right so next thing I had to do was uh, weld the mounting tabs onto the tank. It uh, is going to be mounted to the sides of the bed. This is an 80 inch long tank and these are quarter inch tabs. The tank is made out of eighth inch and so this thing is, uh, is built like a Sherman tank. So I lay them out and I usually just tack them and uh, you can see that I'm using a uh, clamp that's sticking out one of the uh, hold downs for my bench. I'm using it as a rest that way uh, my hand is nice and steady and I have a pivot point that I can go uh, and then I flip it over, do the same thing. The nice thing about this is you can put it at uh, on your elbow or down on your wrist and it works for both. Here we are. Uh, I need to pressure test this now that I have all the welds done. So I get the lid on and this I had to tighten down uh, and I'm pressurizing it. When you do a tank like this you, you have to pressure test it just to make sure that there are no leaks. And so you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. I'm only putting in like uh, 4 psi and uh, which is a lot of volume in a tank this big but you don't want to pump it up with a whole bunch of pressure you can crack the sides of this you know of the of the welds very easily all right so once i have it pressured up i have to take it out for a water test and so i took it out to the pool this is the fastest way to check for any leaks you just uh, hold it down under the water and spin it around check every seam every corner every joint and make sure that there are no leaks and the only leak I had was around the Schrader valve on the fill uh, inlet for the air. So I put a cap on it and uh, that was the only leak it had. So it's structurally sound and it held. I also leave the pressure in it overnight to make sure that, you know, even the tiniest pinhole that you can't see uh, isn't in the tank. And so this thing held pressure overnight. Um, so I know a lot of people are going to say something about corrosion and chlorine and all that, but here in Arizona, everything dries so quickly. I take it inside, blow it off with air, and wipe it down, and there's no chance of corrosion. I gave it a light coat of oil. Uh, here is the uh, tank just before I'm about to deliver it to the customer, and you can see a few different views all cleaned up and ready to go, and he was very happy with the, uh, with the tank once I got it finished for him. All right. So that's it for uh, how I built this aluminum fuel tank. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you got something out of it, great. Uh, that's awesome. If you have any questions about the build or how to build your own tank, you can go ahead and leave them in the comment section and I will answer them for you the best I can. I don't have all the answers, but I do have uh, a lot of experience. And so uh, I can help you if you, if you had a, you know, a, a question about how to build you know, a different type of tank and you know, if there's specifications, I can point you to the right place to get those. Anyway, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, thanks.